Hi there, everyone. It's a pleasure to see you all, and I will absolutely tell you more about this wonderful guest speaker, Jeff Lopez, aka JLo. Um, happy Friday. It's really special being here with and uh, sharing this wonderful space with all of you once again. As, as Jade was saying, we have another incredible speaker, the effervescent Jeff Lopez. Um, so many of you have been offering us such incredible questions about our talent these past couple of weeks. Um, these questions have really helped guide the uh, conversation between our industry guest speakers, and we're really grateful for your participation. Um, we ask that you continue to inundate us with all these wonderful questions of yours. Um, something else I wanted to add before we formally introduce Jeff is many of you have rightfully asked about some of our upcoming female professionals who will be joining us throughout this program, and I want to reassure you that, and I'm quite thrilled to say that, uh, you'll be meeting a wide range of female talent as well, um, starting next week as well, um, all of whom will offer incredible advice on their individual career paths, and they'll offer tips and suggestions on how to enter the commercial games and episodic world. So we look forward to seeing you in the next, uh, in the next few weeks. Um, so I'm, I'm quite excited because Jeff, or as I call him, J-Lo, and I go very, very far back. Uh, we worked together over... Um, Oof, over 10 years ago, um, uh, when I was at the Mill New York and I was scheduling the computer graphics department, I was actually scheduling Jeff on a few projects as well. Um, I worked very closely with Jeff, having supported his hire when he started off as a freelance senior animator. I'd love for him to expand upon his role as a freelancer um, to that of a full-time animation supervisor. And um, he's just been such a pleasure to work with. We've gone on many recruiting trips together. We've worked with a lot of youth programs together. And um, he's a very, very dear friend of mine, if I can be honest about that. Um, Jeff and I had the pleasure of working on uh, some of the most uh, coolest animation projects out there, which some of which he's going to share with you today. Um, he's going to speak about these projects. Um, and I'm really excited for him to share his story with each of you this morning. Um, so as we know, um, this week's programming is focused on movement and the aesthetics of animation. And um, without further ado, I'd love for Jeff to um, speak about this, this part of the CG pipeline. And um, Jeff, if you wouldn't mind turning your camera on so we can see all your, your, oh. your faces. <laughs> so um, it's good to see you. And um, I'd love for you to share how you entered this exciting industry. and. Um, as well as you know, introduce yourself a bit more outside of what I've shared about you. Hello, everyone. Um, like Kat mentioned, my name is Jeff Lopez. Um, it go, I go by work as J Lo. Um, it was a nickname given to me as uh, as I was labeling um, folders, and there's a lot of Jeffs in my company, so I call my J L O, and then someone made fun of it, and I got stuck with it. So. Um, so my title at the mill is, um, you know, I'm the uh, VFX supervisor, uh, head of animation at the mill, uh, and I'm in charge of basically managing my animation team, which consists of six people. Uh, but we have groups, you know, all over the world. We have uh, at the mill LA, L, uh, the mill Chicago, the mill New York, the mill London, the mill Berlin, the mill Bangalore. Um, so these are teams, and each one there is an animation supervisor in each. Uh, in each, uh, um, you know, uh, company. And then we kind of share each other's work from time to time. Um, I mean, I've been working at the mill for 10 years and I've been doing this for about 23 years since I graduated from uh, the School of Visual Arts, SVA. Um, um, should I talk about how I started with doing this, Kat? It would be great to get a sense from, um, for, for the participants as to what you know, why did you choose the world of animation? What prompted you to enter this exciting world? Well, I'll give you the long, long story short. Um, I've been, I've been an artist since I was a kid. Um, I was encouraged by my uncle to, to, to draw all the time. Um, so as, as far as I can remember, I was always drawing, always drawing. Um, I saw a lot of the stuff that you guys posted and it kind of re reminded me of my work when I was a kid. Uh, it, I had the same thing, just, just drawing, just creating stuff like that. Um, I didn't get pretty good until I was in fourth grade. For fourth grade, something happened when I somehow either because maybe repetition and I kept drawing in fourth grade, my, my level of artistic got, got really, got really good. Um, so much that my mom noticed it and she put me into, you know, 
art classes. Uh, I enjoy paintings. I enjoy going to the museum, you know. Um, so then, um, but I also had an inclination for technology stuff. So I like technical stuff. I like math. I like to problem solve. So uh, when I got to high school, um, you know, try to do a couple of groups, you know, to get into like art and, you know, doing this stuff to create like uh, posters and whatnot. And then uh, when I became a senior, I was about to graduate and I, it was like, I think six months before graduation and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I know I wanted to go into uh, like engineering or something and I try, but my math level wasn't as, as high as I wanted it to be or as required by the college. So I was discouraged by that until my art teacher um, advised me. She's like, Jeff, you're pretty good at art. Why don't you go into art, art college? And I'm like, oh, well, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, okay, I'll apply. So which one do you advise? And he's like, you know, there's a range of this Pratt, there is uh, uh, FIT, there is, um, um, what was the other one? Uh, uh, there's Ringling, there's a whole bunch of other schools, but the one that he, that he advised me was to go to SVA. So I applied to SVA, I got on to SVA. Um, and that was, you know, again, that was, you know, 20, 23 years ago. So at the time there was in, uh, there was a computer art major um, and I apply uh, and I got in. Um, after three years of like doing like our basics, like doing photography, sculpturing, drawing, painting, I kind of figured that I really like the digital part of it. So it kind of like my combination of what I like, which is technology and art, I combined them together and I created my own path, uh, which was to do uh, rigging. So I do rigging and I do animation and I, I'm a problem solver. So that's why I got to be where I am by, by having these sort of uh, uh, things in my head where I can come up with a project and I, no matter what the project um, comes in with problems, I can solve them. Um, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to, to work uh, right after college. I graduated on a Tuesday and I was ready working on Wednesday and I really haven't stopped ever since. I've, I've been one of the lucky guys who, who have stuck with it and I've been doing it for 23 years. So that's pretty much where I am uh, right now. Now, and, and what was the first place where you worked um, outside of graduation? Was it an internship? Was it a freelance opportunity? What was sort of- I was, again, I was very, very lucky. I, again, I don't know, I was lucky of being at the right time in the right place. Uh, I got involved with a few friends from college and we did a group together. And, you know, it was fairly new. So the teachers were not uh, a part with what the industry needed. So we kind of fed from each other. We learned from each other. I would learn something with lip sync and somebody else did some rigging stuff and we share that sort of information. So we got our, our thesis were actually really good. Uh, so much that this company called Curious Pictures hire us, uh, four or five of us, to work on one of the commercials for Oscar Mayer. So I got introduced right away to work in a, in a professional environment right away. And uh, that was my first job coming out of college. It wasn't an internship, it was just like, you know, we hit our, our you, know, um, you know, we hit it right on the, on the money. We started working right away, you know, uh, before that, I was working at a clothing company, uh, just selling clothes, like Aeropo style, just trying to make some money was in college. And this time I was actually learning, uh, I was earning a living with what I went to school for. It was the first time when I got my first check, I was so happy that I was, you know, I went to college, I did all that work, all those late nights, and I got my first paycheck. I was so happy, um, you know, to go through, to gone through that stuff. Um, yeah, that's a that's a really good feeling. Um, you know, I, I kind of referenced that you and I have um, worked on some pretty cool projects together, and I'd love for you to perhaps you know share some of these projects, maybe talk through your experiences working on them, and and perhaps while you're pulling them up, you know, you referenced something um, that really resonated with me that I think is really important for our participants to know is that you know you'd spent some time working at Aeropostal, the the client serv or the the clothing oh, shop. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really important for those of you who are in the audience today to recognize that a lot of these, um, these uh, what we like to call side projects or, 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 or gigs that you have in which to earn an income, these are all very important roles that you can reflect on your LinkedIn and on your resumes moving forward because a lot of companies in general love to see that you've got those client skills because um, they translate really well. So I think it's important to know that even if 
some of your initial entry level roles that you you used to to get to that next step in your career, whether you pursue an animation role, a production role, a marketing role, um, having these jobs is is equally as important. And studios and recruiters look for those skill sets. I mean, and more so, like it kind of helps you build yourself, right? So when you're at a school or while you're in school, if you have a job, I mean, you are earning money, obviously. Mm-hmm but you are learning a skill, which is interaction with other people. How do you interact with those people? And, you know, it's like, you know, it's life. You just learn it and, uh, you know, hopefully you get good at it and then you'll, so, you know, you'll see, you know, and then, you know, I, I have, to, uh, I would think that those, those type of jobs that I did, not just an herbal style, I sold pots. I was working on, I did landscape stuff. I painted the high school when I was doing my summer jobs. So I did a lot of the stuff, but that builds character, right? It builds yourself. And then, you know, you, you create your own, a person and these these were are, later on will, will help you you know be a manager if you want to be a manager be able to you know be a leader um so i, I mean like Kat and i we always like i like to feed up from from you guys so if you guys can submit things of what you like to see um i'm a again i mentioned i'm a i'm a visual effects supervisor which means that i do a lot of commercials that deal with things that you guys should not notice so when every time you see a car commercial or a product shot, sometimes the product doesn't exist. Sometimes the car doesn't exist. Sometimes there's no crowds, there's no people. They don't, the atmosphere, the, the environment does not exist. So we have to create it. So the challenge for us is to make it something that you guys do not see it as being odd in the plate. Um, so, you know, so I have a lot of stuff to show. Again, I, I, I touch anything that comes in my mind. I can do um, a, a dancing box to a, a flying ribbon to dragons to uh, characters from Apex doing facial animation, uh, mocap. Um, I mean, graphic design, you, you name it, I touch because I'm an animator. And as you guys know, an animation is the art of creating something and give it life. So again, if you guys post like, what do you guys want to see? I'll be more than happy to share my screen. You and Jeff, to... why don't I kick us off by asking you if you could perhaps showcase that um, Mucinex character that we were chatting about the other day. I'd love for you to be able to share him because he's, as we say, one of those squashy, stretchy characters that I, I suspect you had a lot of fun with him. Yes. So this For project, her. <laughs> yeah, well, him. He, he was, uh, Mr. Mucinex was, uh, was a project that we got uh, last, last year or two years ago. We got some, some, some spots uh, from the company. And this one, we, we shot three commercials. Um, they were shot in Spain. So I was able to go, since I was a visual effects supervisor, I was there in the shoot. So we shot three spots. And I'm gonna show one of them that was a night uh, shoot. So we started at around six in the afternoon and we didn't finish until six in the morning. So we shot all night uh, to, to give as much, um, uh, you know, true to the, the spot because it was about zombies. So we had to be shooted. We had to shoot it at night. We went to a, a neighborhood somewhere in the outskirts of, of Madrid. And, um, you know, we had uh, huge cranes with like smoke to create that sort of moody uh, feeling. Uh, we had zombies being, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of people being um, uh, doing a special effect makeup. Um, and it was so good that the actual uh, they, the clients were like, no, no, that's too scary. So they had to tone it down and made it less zombie-like. Anyways, I'll share it with you guys. Um, and he was a great character. I mean, he's, he's just funny and he's just, is a big bowl of snot with no neck. So uh, that's always sometimes challenging. So I'm going to share this with you guys. You can see my screen, right, Kat? Uh, not just yet, but I'm sure I'll get to see it soon. Hold on. Yeah. Now we're starting to see you, your screen. All right, so these are all the spots that I'm going to show up. Here we go. So here we go. So, you know, uh, I'll just hit play. What's this? Cindy, that cold's going to keep you up all night, and tomorrow you're going to be a zombie. <laughs> Forget that. I'm taking a new nighttime cold medicine. Ah, there's nothing new. Afraid so. New Mucinex Night Shift Cold and Flu fights my worst symptoms so I can sleep great and wake up human. So you don't want to be a zombie? No, I've got to work tomorrow. Don't eat me. I taste terrible. New Mucinex Night Shift Cold and Flu. Uniquely formulated to fight your worst symptoms so you can sleep great and wake up human. 
That's a great spot, Jeff. Yes. Um, how, um, how long did that particular project take? So again, I mentioned the shoot was uh, three days, so th three different places. And then we, um, we probably worked on it for another six weeks, probably around six weeks, like two or three weeks of animation and two or three weeks of like uh, lighting and, uh, and, um, and texturing and comping it together. And how many animators did you have on this particular job? We had, uh, so Navdeep was the lead animator on this. Um, and he animated with two other guys, uh, a, a girl, sorry, Jessica and, um, and uh, I think John Wilson worked on it. Um, Kayla from our, mem our, our participants uh, group is asking, you know, what's, what's a project that you're most proud of? Is there a project amongst this group of projects that you're, you're about to share with us that there's a particular job that you're most excited about or most enthusiastic about? Sure, I'll share this one. I like this one and I, I brought it up before. It was a, a Super Bowl spot from 2016. It's a little old, but it was a challenging spot because it was, um, uh, let me see, like I like to just, so they can and see. Actually, Jeff, right. while you pull this up, um, some of you might recognize this spot from last week. Oh, okay, yes. So Eric so, Lane was working on it as well. Yes, so for this one, it was this challenge because um, it's it's a transformer like you know and I'm a rigger how do you know how do you it's if any if anyone has done any transformation characters they're difficult to do and needless to say this was difficult it took me about six tries six different approaches to 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 get where I where what where, where I ended up doing um, and we didn't know that this was going to be a Super Bowl spot until four days before the Super Bowl uh, we had a hint that it could be but you know they were they were charging like I think it was three three four million dollars per thirty seconds, so the client was not keen on paying that much. But then after he saw the the, the result of it, he really liked it, so he he paid the money and and they showed it on the Super Bowl. And it was challenging. It was it was I had to uh, pull a couple uh, late nights on it, but at the end of the day, I, I loved it. I I loved the the part that um, it pushed me to a limit to figure out how to do it. I, I took a lot of inspiration from, of course, Transformers. Um, the movie and and you know I thought the, the the director or the creative director really liked it and they enjoyed it and we had a very good team Young who did all the the lighting and Eric Lang who did a lot of the designs and modeling at the end of the day it came out really good uh, about 80 percent of the shots are all fake they're not real um, so there's only maybe like three or four shots who are live actions and the rest is all CG I'm not going to show it since you guys already seen it, so I can show. Well, if you don't, if you don't mind, I'd love for you to play it again, just in the event that our participants have any questions about the animation. Sure. So here we go. I'm such a fan of it. New Chic Hydro versus the Lube Strip. With a hydrating gel reservoir that gives you 40% less friction. So it's designed like no other razor to protect from irritation. Sorry, Lube Strip. Chick Hydro. Free your skin. That's a great one. And I think when I spoke to Eric last week, we were reminded of the fact that that spot wasn't originally a Super Bowl spot <laughs> to begin with. It wasn't, and it was, uh, <clears throat> we worked on it until Thursday and Super Bowl was Sunday. So we worked until Thursday on that. So it was until the end of the wire, we were still tweaking certain things at the end when he grabs it. So it, it was it was very challenging. And, and it's one of the things that I, I, I'm very uh, fond of it because it was, uh, I was the VFX supervisor and I was lead on it and I was the lead animator on it. So, and I worked with the editor, try to create the story uh, so it was really, really good to do it from start to finish. Um, um, Nilaja was wondering, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, Nilaja was wondering uh, how many frames did you work with on this spot? How many frames? Um, well, we run this at 24 frames per second. So there's 24 shots per second. And you know, I think overall this is 720 frames, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I did... I did the challenging shots, which all the transformation shots I did, all of those. 
Um, but you know the whole you know the previs pretty much like uh, you know when you do storyboards then you do it in a previs which basically like you you dumb it down and you create a 3D world and you start animating it from like very dumbed down rigs. So I did all of that. And then once we moved to animation, then I took like a handful of shots and I gave uh, Goron, another animator, the chance to shine and do his own, uh, you know, uh, animation stuff on it. Uh, and I think Alex, Alex, Elaine helped a little bit in one of the shots. Um, yeah, that's about it for that. Yeah, it sounds like quite a collaborative animation experience, particularly since the animation was so detailed. Oh yeah, it, it was. And again, they were, they didn't know what they wanted. So we needed to try a couple of things. Um, you know, so, so we did, I mean, six times, it took six different tries to create that sort of motion going up and try to come out. How do you, how do you hide something and something else comes up? You know, you kind of have to go frame by frame to see the whole thing. But when you, when it flows, it, it feels fine. It feels good. Um, um Last question I'll ask you about this particular spot, um, but Tet was actually asking, you know, what type, you know, what's the timeline on this type of a particular project? I know this is a unique experience because when the project first awarded, I recall even having helped schedule it and, you know, it, it was originally supposed to be a specific timeline and then obviously we expedited the timeline in light of the fact that the clients were really excited about the spot, loved the characters, loved the animation, the latest Transformers film had come out or was about to come out and um, you know, they, they obviously wanted to bring this forward and have it delivered to Super Bowl. But how would you describe the timeline for our Yeah, I think it got shorter by, I think, two weeks. So we had a, a time frame, and then I think it got shorter by two weeks because of Super Bowl. So that means that, you know, you know, we needed to work longer hours, obviously, to create uh, the changes that the client want. And I think we were presenting every, every day. So not only do we have to, not only do we have our own creative directors at, at work, we also have creative directors from the agency side. So we need to first, you know, do what our creative director wants, then we present that to the agency. The agency presents it to the client. So it goes through all these levels, and you have to make sure that everyone's happy with it. So it just took longer hours. So I was working until sometimes nine, ten o'clock at night to get this stuff done in the last two weeks of the project. Um, one thing that I, I'll mention, and, and this is one of the things where, um, you know, I was told many, many, many years ago, if you do something and you don't like what you're doing, it's called work. And if you do something that you like what you're doing, it's called passion. So I was very passionate about this. And I didn't mind that I was working because it looked good. It looks, it looks amazing. It's, it's you know, it, it, it builds my career. It builds on top of what I did. It, I think it's, it was a Super Bowl spot. So I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. It wasn't for long and, you know, my family understands. So um, I'm happy about that. Awesome. Now, now you did mention something along the lines of Apex. I'm curious if you might have something to share along those lines and if you could speak to the project itself, because I'm sure yeah. our participants would be really excited to hear more. Yeah. So for Apex Spot, uh, I'll bring it up. This one that I'm going to show, it was one of the first ones we did, and that was done in the LA office. The LA office is located right next to us, um, uh, 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 motion capture studio, literally right next to us. So then we're able to work very closely. So a lot of the motion capture spots that we do are go through LA. So right now, New York is helping on the next Apex job. I can't really show that because we're in the middle of it, uh, but we'll show the first one. And it's basically, we're, uh, you know, even though I didn't work on it, we, 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 are, we are using the same sort of methods, which is motion capture on the, on the body and then a face, uh, facial mocap also. And then we enhance that. So I'll, I'll show this so you guys can see it. You probably yeah. are familiar with it. Where is it? Uh, there you go. Oh yeah, I remember this one very well. Yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back here, brother. I dare you. I won't, but you're already dead. Night night. As a boy, I would do what. One day, have the courage to be king. You're a fast guy. You're pretty slow. For a dog guy, you're perfect. 
I am perfect. Close thing gets hot. to this particular project, Jeff. Um, you know, a lot of our participants play Apex. A lot of folks thought it was super cool. Um, I'm not a gamer, so I'm just learning all these names. Watson, Octane, Mirage, Path, uh, Pathfinder, all these characters. I, I'm not a, I'm not a game, I'm gamer, but they're, they're fun characters. They all have their own characteristics and their own look. Um, I mean, the, 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 the clients are very particular of what these characters look like and what they do. Like for example, the guy Octane, he is a uh, uh, junkie or druggie or something. So he's always always hyper. He's always moving around. So we have to create a personality when we animate it. You know, sometimes we do motion cap uh, motion capture for the body, but you don't get these little nuances. So that you, as an animator, have to add them in. The same thing with the facial capture. Uh, Rampart is another character who is very feisty. She has like a a little. Uh, um, her teeth are a little bit apart in the middle and she has like a really mean attitude but she's cool so then we have to bring that sort of facial expressions into her animation and i guess that's you know that you know some animators might say like oh i don't like to do work with a motion capture but this is the part where you you know you bring in your talent and you you create a character from you know a character that doesn't have the what you're supposed to look like you know you know what i mean yeah no, um, I definitely do. Um, now, I'm conscious of the fact that the LA office obviously worked on this particular project. Do you happen, like Mafkuna was wondering, do you happen to have an idea as to how many individuals worked on this particular spot? Um, I think um, it's, it's th these, these are longer. So they're like three minute, three or four minute pieces. So the teams are much bigger. Uh, and it goes a lot longer, right? So then uh, I think right now we have about three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven, eight animators on this right now. Um, we have about five or six lighters, mm -hmm. you know, an editor. Um, I don't know how many people they have on FX. Um, so the team could be quite large. It could be maybe 20 people working on this at one point. And, and you know it's done in stages, right? So you you do your previous or your storyboard, you model, you rig, and you animate. Then it goes into lighting, and then it goes to nuke or, or compositing, and effects, and then final. So it goes in stages. So it can go on for. So far, we're working on this spot for about two months, and we have another month and a half to go. Mm -hmm. so it's like three and a half months to do a three three minute piece. So. Which is which is a bit more ample in our world of, of commercials. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, um, I mean, um, I don't. What else can I share you with you guys that you guys will be excited about? I can share you the PlayStation, which is this is more in the realms of visual effects, which is for one of our, our PlayStation spots that we did in New York. It was shot in Europe. I don't. I think Prague. I'm not remember where it was, but I'll show you guys. Yeah, and actually, I think by the by the level of enthusiasm in terms of those who who uh, who are gamers in the audience, I think this is a really nice segue, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, for this PlayStation, I was actually very happy because I was I was only there was only like one animator, which it was me, and again, I guess I was 
uh, I was put in this job because I was rigging and animated. So I was able to animate like the dragon. I was able to animate Spider-Man in the beginning. So the first half and all the helicopters are all done by me. Wake up, wake up. The time has come for paths to be beat and treasures won and impossible tales to be sung of the heights that will scale and the depths will plumb. As we take on our foes together as one, Uncover new worlds beyond the sun. Do we send our fears back to where they came from? Wake up, wake up. The time has come. PlayStation. That's an incredible spot. Um what did you most enjoy about working on that particular project for PS4? Um, I, I liked the part that I was doing Spider-Man. I don't know, I liked it. Uh, for some reason, I was really, really happy with it. And again, the clients were very, uh, uh, you know, picky again. And the poses that the Spider-Man does, so his fingers had to be like that and had to have to carry that sort of like momentum that the Spider-Man does. So that was challenging. Uh, the, the snake was, was challenging too, uh, the dragon, because it was just one big sausage. So we had to, you know, it was, it was only this big with the head and they wanted him to be like this huge snake. So we had to bring in the rake three times and wrap it around and then animate it. So it looks like it was a long snake, but it wasn't, it was a very short snake. Um, so again, these are like uh, the problems that you, you come up when you start animating, like they ask for something like, oh, I don't want to have it. So you kind of have to like uh, put on your thinking hat and try to figure it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Spider-Man PS4 game myself, so I was quite excited to see it in this particular commercial. Um, so Amaris is asking, um, you know, is this, is this an option for you? You know, how do you decide which projects are right for you um, or the ones that you want to work on? Do you, do you get to make those types of decisions when you're in your position or, um, or do you not? Yes, I get to, I get to pick what I want to work on. Um, lucky enough, I'm, I'm the animation supervisor. Um, but again, I try to be fair. Um, again, I've been doing this for 23 years and I'm in a position that I can help others. So I do my best to do that. I have a team of uh, six animators. So, um, you know, I, I feel like I have a, a duty to help them out. Uh, just like, you know, I had my mentors who helped me out when I started. Um, so then I, um, you know, I, I manage the team. So I speak to the schedulers. The schedule will come to me and they'll, they'll ask me, okay, we have this Apex job and we have the Mucinic job. Um, who do you want on the team? And I will allocate the, 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 the right person for it, for those teams. Uh, and then, you know, I have a very good uh, communication with my artists, with my animators, where they come in and they're like, hey, Jeff, you know, by the way, I've done too many characters. Can I get a dragon if it comes in or an animal? I want to work on an animal. So I keep that in mind. And then the job that comes in and I'll make sure that they work on that job. So I'm in a position where I can help build uh, a career for the other animators, I'm doing that. I, and and, I, and I, I try to be as fair as, as possible. Um, I've done plenty of stuff already, so I don't need anything in my reel more than I already have. So, I'll, you know, if there's a cool spot, if I can do one shot, uh, I'm a happy man. I'm happy just to just do one or two, be part of the process, but let everyone else shine. Just like the Mucinic spot, I, was, I didn't animate per se, but I gave the opportunity to Navi to be the lead animator and I let him grow as, a, as an animator to, to help his other animators grow and be, uh, you know, have a better product. I supervise them, but I let him, let him write it. I let him give him the opportunity to do that. Um, Sadia is gonna put you on the spot with, with her question. Um, you know, how do you not compromise your artistic integrity under a rushed time frame? Do you ever regret something that you've worked on that you weren't satisfied with. I mean, I think, I think as an artist, you'll never happy with what you have. You'll never, I mean, Leonardo da Vinci was never happy with the Mona Lisa ever, you know? So as an artist, you kind of have that, you know, I'm never happy with my stuff. I wish I could go back and fix it. But um, 
it is a lot of pressure because you have to be on your A game every time you do a work, you do jobs. Uh, you cannot have a downtime. You, uh, you, you know, and, and, but you're not on this by yourself. You have a team, you have a, a group of people that is going to push you. So do you have a bad day? Yeah, of course you're going to have a bad day. I have, I have plenty of bad days, but then I have my team that pushes me to be, you know, pushes me up, like lifts you up and be like, they critique you. I mean, just because I'm in a position of a leadership doesn't mean that I don't get critique. I get critique just like everyone else. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have that sort of hierarchy with all my animators or my team. So um, you, you, again, for me, no matter what's in front of me, I always try to make it the best that I can. So I mentioned this, there's plenty of times when I do product shots and it's a product shot. It's just a box moving around in space, but you have to make it the best box possible because your name is on that job. Your name is on that spot. Who worked in that spot? Oh, Jeff Lopez worked on it. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Or like, or if it's a crappy, you know, you don't want that. You don't want that to be on your name. So you have to be proud of what you do and do a good job. For that matter, I'll show you a product shot so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's a great segue too, because, you know, when you're an animator, sometimes you have the opportunity to work on such fun, massive animals or all kinds of character designs. You can bring them to life. Um, and then sometimes, admittedly, a client will approach your studio and ask you to animate a cell phone. Or yes. animate a pack shot. Breakthrough science requires breakthrough innovation. More than 30 fold increase in data density cuts running costs by up to 50%. Efficient and sustainable. Fully integrated microfluidics with around 10 fold reduction in reagent volumes. Streamlined secondary analysis in as little as two hours for novices and experts alike. Nexeep 2000. The future is created by you. It's just a flying box, pretty much so. So your job is to make it sure that it looks slick, it looks nice, it looks beautiful, and you do nice, soft camera moves and push ins and push outs. And you know, once they light it, it looks pretty good, and the sound helps it. So again, that's that's my daily, daily life. Do doing dragon, Spider Man, uh, and boxes and flying cameras. Uh, I I do what they give me. You know, um, um, I don't I don't have any qualms about what what what's in front of me. I'll always try my best and, and, you know, and, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that they get the best of me. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not doing it for free. They're paying me. So I might, might as well, you know, you know, do what I can to, to help my company out. Um, getting a bit more nitpicky um, and, and speaking a bit more technically, um, Jessica and a few others were wondering um, what, what software is you use to animate? Well, our, our office uses Maya to do our animation, um, but we use every software you can imagine to do what we need to do. So for, for explosions and fire and water, we will use Houdini. Um, for animation and rigging, we'll use uh, Maya. Um, we use, uh, we've used XSI, which is an old software. We don't use it that much because it's discontinued. Um, and we have our own proprietary stuff that helps speed our ways to do fur, for example, and feathers. Uh, those are very technical uh, things. And, and you know, we have some technical guys who are brilliant and very smart. And they, they make our stuff look good. You know, the turkeys from, uh, from uh, Chantix, those are all done by us. And we do the fur on that. And some, some guy in London, Craig Davis, did the, the whole uh, R&D on the fur. And it looks really, really amazing. It really does. And I'd love for you to be able to share that spot if you might. But beforehand, I wanted to ask, um, Jaden was wondering, you know, going back to the pack shot that you shared with us just now, um, you know, for the project that you've just shown, um, you know, there's a section when all the different parts come together. Right. Um, you know, did you have a reference for the object that you were animating? Did you have any, any sort of tangible references from the client that they put forward to share with you? Well, I think they gave us parts of the, the actual physical parts. Um, but, you know, we, we couldn't take it apart because it's, it's, you just couldn't do that. But we, could, we were able to see it, see how big it is and stuff. Um, and they gave, they gave us the, the, it's called the cat data. The cat data is the actual dense geometry that they use to make these products for real. So, you know, and, you know, we get the data, we have to make sure that it is, 
uh, it's very heavy, so we have to like uh, optimize it to make it work for us. And then we just, I'll just take it and I take it apart, group sections, and then animate them and offset them so they look nice and pretty as they come close together. Don't know if that answered the questions. I think it hopefully has. Um, outside of that, um, I'd love, again, and um, just because I, I know that when I speak to my parents, Chantix is such a well-known brand and the commercials were so popular with so many of my friends. So I, I feel like it might be familiar to some of you if you see that one of the spots that Jeff's about to share. Sure. It may not be as well, but I'm just quite curious to see if this is a spot you might have all. It's tough to quit smoking cold turkey. So Chantix can help you quit slow turkey. Along with support, Chantix is proven to help you quit. With Chantix, you can keep smoking at first and ease into quitting. Chantix reduces the urge so when the day arrives, you'll be more ready to kiss cigarettes goodbye. When you try to quit smoking, with or without Chantix, you may have nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Stop Chantix and get help right away if you have changes in behavior or thinking, aggression, hostility, depressed mood, suicidal thoughts or actions, seizures, new or worse harder blood vessel problems, sleepwalking, or life-threatening allergic and skin reactions. Decrease alcohol use. Use caution driving or operating machinery. Tell your doctor if you've had mental health problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Quit smoking, slow turkey. Talk to your doctor about Chantix. We did like eight of them. We yeah, like I was going to say you worked on quite a few of those spots. Yes, we did a lot of those. So again, the fur is being done by, uh, you know, the effects department. You know, we just do the turkey and they all do their magic and it looks amazing. And, you know, the car is fake and, you know, you know, the, the paddle boat is fake. Um, I think the water where he's on, the part next to it, that's all fake. So it's, it's nice that they do some, they do some good work. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with you there. Um, now, Tristan was asking, um, much like many members of our audience, you know, what is um, the most fun project you've worked on to date? Is there a particular project um, that you still think about often that really challenged you or that you were really excited about? Um, just really curious about a spot you may not have shown yet that you might have been really excited about. I mean, there's so many. I mean, I, I've worked on other spots and other companies who, 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 who at the time was challenging. Uh, I worked at Sayup and we did a uh, world of Coke, uh, Happy Factory 2, and that, that was fun to do. That was like, we had like 15, 16 animators. It was a big team. It was like a seven minute piece. It was fun. Uh, when I was at the mill, we did a couple of spots, like, like the shit comes to mind, Mucinix comes to mind. The project that I'm working on, Apex right now comes to mind, it's, it's, it was fun, it's, 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 it's good. Um, so there, again, there are just so many that I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I've been able to work on these type of projects with the, the, the talented people that I work at the mill. Um, you know, it, it, there, there are, there are, they are all top notch animators. So, or an artist. So I'm, I'm, you know, very lucky that I get to work with those guys. Um, yeah, you are quite the talented bunch, uh, I must say. Um, I kind of want to get a sense from your end. You know, we've, we've shown a few of your projects. We've talked about them a little bit. I'd kind of like to take a mini break for a moment. Um, Sabrina was asking earlier, um, and I think this also speaks to how one can enter the business and do a lot of what you're doing. So it'd be nice to sort of expand upon that a little bit. Um, Sabrina was wondering, what do you suggest for someone who wants to become better at drawing? You mentioned when you were younger that you drew a lot. That's all you, you really enjoyed doing, which is how you sort of evolved into becoming an animator. What are some suggestions um, our participants can have to become better at drawing? I mean, practice. Practice, you know, makes perfect. So if you draw, you know, and draw what you like, you know, draw. I mean, also, you know, sometimes, you know, like I got into drawing and I, I used to draw like, you know, cute things, right? That was my thing. I used to like cute stuff. And then one time I got into comic books and a friend of mine showed me uh, a comic book uh, for X-Men Uncanny. Uh, 273, I think, and the guy who did the front cover was Jim Lee. And that guy, that artist completely, I was like, whoa, what is this? It's not the regular comic book that I was used to, you know, looking at DC Comics. 
this was Marvel and Jim Lee was amazing. It kind of inspired me. I'm like, I want to do that. So I started like mimicking his drawing style and I was able to capture what he was doing. And I was, I was like, holy, you know, it was more of a realization that I could expand on what you're doing. So I started then doing more comic book stuff. And then I moved into like uh, doing like, um, you know, life, life, uh, life size stuff, like, you know, like uh, an apple or something, you put it together, you start drawing it. Sometimes that's not what you want to do. So you, you, you know, find what, what drives you and, and, and draw it. And again, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It's just a fact that, you know, the more things you do one thing, you're going to get good at it. So uh, again, and if it's, think about it as like, it's not work, it's your passion. So if you're passionate about it, you don't mind doing it. And to me, I love to draw. I didn't like to, I didn't like to paint. Drawing and inking was my thing and it is fine. You don't have to paint it. If, you know, maybe someone else would like to paint it so you can make a copy of it and give it to someone else and the person can just paint it. You know, now you can do it digitally. So, you know, do it digitally. Uh, so the best advice is just keep, keep drawing, keep doing what you, what you do. I mean, that's what I do. I try to do as much as possible, not just in CG, not on the computer, but I like to do tangible stuff. I like to make stuff. Uh, I get my hands dirty and, you know, if people know what Arduino and, um, you know, um, technical stuff and solder stuff, you know, do that, do, do whatever passion, you know, drives you to be an artist. Um, I can I can show uh, if you don't mind maybe uh, the Marco Polo spot that we did. That's a wonderful idea. It's not CG, but it was more like artistic. So CG helped the comping, but all of it was done by hand, meaning that the drawings, inking, and it was just how everything was put together that it actually looks like an amazing spot. I'll show this to you guys. This is a title sequence. shared this with the group uh can you speak as to the process and how sure, there's a making of it but uh the guy who directed it was bryce and uh, i love working with him he is an amazing artist he has no ego he's super smart he's super talented so his their approach was to basically um you know they took images they put a, a like um say like a like a glass on top of it and they used different papers uh, and they had a light underneath. So they were able to lay straights with a, 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 a um, what is it called? Uh, like a brush with water. And he was able to trace the thing. They would turn the light off. They would pour ink and they would record it. And they would move the camera around. And they would do like macro. So then you'll see how, you know, the shape is being formed. And again, it's, there's no CG on it. It's all basically done on the shoot. And they took different elements and they combined them together 
like a drip of, of ink. They, 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 uh, they shot it and then they would grab it and, and, and comp and they would put it together and they would put a whole bunch of them and they put it together. And if you notice, the camera's always alive. There's always a little drift. That gives it such a sense of like, like it, it looks very properly done. It's not, it's not your still camera. And if it's still, it has a slightly change. So it gives it like a life of its own. If you notice the letters are not completely uh, black, they are, they have a little dim underneath that kind of blends in with the paper. So these nuances is what's, you know, if you pick at it and it, it, at the end, it just makes it look so much better than anything you see out there for title sequences. And I'm, I'm you know, I was so, so happy to see what they did on it. Yeah, there's something very whimsical about it. And I think I, I know and speaking with so many of those of the artists who worked on the project, they all really, really enjoyed this experience. Um, Rebecca was wondering, um, you know, how long did the, did the project itself take? I'm not too sure about this project, how long it took, but I don't, I mean, again, usually roughly our, 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 our commercials run from two weeks to, you know, three months. So I, I would say this is probably in the, in the range of six weeks, you know, yeah. they shot it in a uh, weekend. Uh, I think they shot it at the studio at our company. I don't remember where it was shot. Um, but, um, you know, I, I mean, go ahead, do you have any more questions? I'll, I'll show the making of it. I think the making of it would be quite nice to, to see. And then um, I definitely have some specific questions, more of which will put you on the spot as an artist, Jeff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. This is the making. <laughs> How long? You know me well. Only a minute and a half. Good. You're getting so many uh, positive remarks, Jeff, about these titles. Um, general consensus is everyone's loving them. Um, yeah, again, the mill, we, we do a lot of stuff. I mean, you'd be surprised when you look at their website. Again, we're so vast. We're so big. We, we have people in LA, Chicago, New York, London. They do so much of it that you watch TV and you're like, oh, we did that. Oh, we did that. We did that. I know we did that. Like sometimes back to back. So uh, we do a lot of stuff and it ranges. It's just, you know, it's just all over the place which that's, that's one of the parts I love because it's not, I don't get to do one thing the same all the time. It's always changing. It is always changing. And actually um, with that said, Harood was asking earlier, um, are there any new tools or any, any uh, technology, so I'm reading his question directly, that you're excited for in the world of animation, whether it's ray tracing, cloth hair simulation, is there anything that is new and upcoming that you are specifically very excited about? Well, right now we're 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 gearing to do you know VR stuff. So that's that's another challenge that we are as animators need to uh, embrace because it is coming and and it is one of you know it's not going to take over what I'm doing right now, but it's definitely going to branch out to something else. Right. You know, before I like to you know you had like three of them, right? Gaming, commercials, and film. Now you can say boom! Now you have VR stuff. 
So now VR is a new challenging, a new thing of seeing, doing things and seeing things. You know, who knows what Google or Apple are coming up with their devices and how are we embracing this set of technology of AR, VR stuff in our environments. I think that's, that's, that's interesting to see. Right. Um, I also kind of wanted to know, you know, some of our participants were asking, you know, for those of you um, who really want to get into the world of rigging and animation, you know, we obviously spoke about how to, to practice drawing more and, and sort of, you know, finesse your skills that way. But for those who are interested in rigging and animation, you know, what are some tips or suggestions you have for them so as to break into the industry? I mean, it's, it's pretty vast, but, you know, like for me, if you want to be a rigger, you need to study anatomy, like physiology. How does, how do things move? Why do they things move the way they move? Like uh, a cat moves a lot different than a horse or, you know, you know, a bird to a dragon or a bat. Like they all have different physiologicals that you need to have a keen eye and see what is it that makes them different and study. You have to study that. Um, we're doing facial uh, animation right now and we need to study muscles in our, in our, in our face. And, you know, you need to have your, your happy mirror next to you because you need to look at yourself and, you know, what makes a true smile is not just doing this, that's fake. These muscles need to come in to show a real smile, a genuine smile. And as an animator, you need to know this sort of stuff because you're animating, you're acting it out. So you need to portray that that's person actually laughing. So you need to learn as much as possible about everything. You know, if it's motion relating to like, again, muscles, how does, you know, like we did a spot for the, uh, for 99%, uh, we needed to learn how does the chimpanzee move? Why does it do this sort of things? And then we had artists to study the muscles and put the muscles and then do the skin. How does it move? These are the things that you, you, you know, if you're passionate about it, you, you learn it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Daniela, uh, was kind of wondering, speaking of putting you on the spot, what are your biggest strengths, would you say? Or what are your biggest weaknesses? You know, where are your strengths as an animator? And where, where could you use a little bit of improvement? Because I know even though you're at your most senior level uh, uh, within the industry, you know, there's always an opportunity to work towards that next step in your career, regardless of how senior you are. Right, I mean, to me, like I always say, as an animator, I'm always learning every day. You learn every something new every day as an animator, as an artist. Um, you know, there's so many things in life that you just, you know, you, you, you keep, I, I try to keep an, a keen eye on certain things. Like I'm a very visual person. So I always like to, you know, when I watch movies and certain things, and if I animate it, I recall those, those shots and I'll, I'll, I'll get some influence from it when I'm doing my stuff. Um, I mean, I think my biggest strength is being able to, uh, try to take the best out of you and portray it to the spot. Um, and what I mean by that is when I have my animators, I wanna, I don't wanna micromanage them. I want them, I want them to create. One of the reasons why we hired them at the mill was because they were good at something. And I don't wanna micromanage them and tell them, you need to move this ball from A to B. Here's where I want it, here's where it needs to be. But this in between is up to you. You do what you want to get to that point. So to me, I think that's one of the biggest strengths that I have is try, I, I want to try to get stuff out of you to push it, to push you to have a very, to push it more what you can, you can actually think you can get. Uh, I think that's my, one of the biggest strengths that I have. Uh, and I like to make my environment a friendly environment. I don't like to go to work and be like, I go to work and I got my little tie and I do my thing. That's not me. I like to be, I, I like to enjoy where I am. Um, you know, crack jokes at work. You know, I want to be like is an extra uh, living room in my space, in my house. So I get to work with people that I enjoy and I enjoy what I do and I want to enjoy who I work with. Um, I mean, things that I need, to, I mean, I need to improve in any, everything. You know, I, I wish I could be a better communicator. I wish I could express myself better. Um, you know, I wish I could be better in animated. I wish I, wish I knew more. Uh, but, you know, life is a, is, a, is a thing that you learn every single day. And you need to kind of take that, you know, with a grain of salt. You, you're learning. You're never going to know to animate everything all the time. 
you know, uh, Ollie Johnson, which is one of the eight animators, you know, the, the eight old men, nine old men, and Ollie Johnson said, I'm always learning. And as Ollie Johnson said that at 80 years old animating, you know, who are you to say, I know how to animate everything? No, you, you, you're constantly learning. You're constantly learning about animating. Yeah, that's, that's well said. And it's ever evolving, really. Um, uh, Bridget and I were both wondering, you know, what inspires you? You know, who inspires you? Um, where do you gather your inspiration? Everyone, everything. Like, I don't, I don't, I can't say like, there's a certain person that I like, but there's certain styles. If I see something and I'm like, oh, that looks cool. That inspires me. There was one of the spots that Sai just did. A friend of mine worked on it, Pat Porter. And it's a really cool spot. It's a little girl, girl you know, it's for one of those games and the girl's baking this, this muffin or something. And it's really cute. And I, I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. It was very, uh, it was nice for him to share. And I, and I liked it. I have another friend of mine, Jim Hundemark, who animates the Geico for the Gecko from the Geico. And I enjoyed those spots. They inspire me. They, you know, I want to do a, as good as a job as my friends do. Um, you know, other artists, I know even artists who are, do stuff that are tangible inspire me. Um, you know, wherever this art inspires me. Mm -hmm. And you highlight something that is also really important in the industry. And Eric touched upon it last week in last week's session where, you know, you're mentioning Jim, who's the head of animation at Framestore New York. And you've mentioned um, Pat, who's the head of animation at SciUp New York. You know, it's obviously, you know, you're overseeing animation at the mill and it obviously showcases how small the industry is and how small the world is and how important it is to maintain these work relationships with your friends. Again, yeah, you never know who you work with. So, uh, you know, especially starting from as a junior animator or as an internship, you don't know who you're working next to it because it could be a point where that person seeing how you work, you know, do you take your job seriously? Are you putting the best effort on creating that box animation of the phone animation, the best animation you possibly can? And that, was, that, was, that speaks highly of you because that person next to you might know someone else that could refer you to work somewhere else. That happened to me. So I got my jobs starting out, was not as a staff, was as a freelancer. Like I mentioned my first job at Curious Pictures. And you work and you did your best and then your name got carried over by someone else who was sitting next to me. They advised me to someone else and I ended up wor working at RGA Studios later on. So again, you, know, you, you, you try your best and I'm sure doors will open up. Yeah, that's absolutely. Um, Brian was asking earlier, and this is something that we did ask both Sikani and Eric in the previous weeks of the program. Um, he wants to know, uh, you know, he said he first of all loves seeing, you know, these animations and then the commercials that you've shared. But um, how did you or how do you combat burnout, particularly when obviously we all know how how crazy the hours can be in our world of animation and, and post production? You know, how do you manage those? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a constant struggle, obviously. Um, but um, I also take uh, um, um, I don't know if you, again, if you're an animator, you know who Glenn Keane is. Uh, Glenn Keane was one of, it is one of the best animators that Disney had. He was the guy who animated Tarzan. He was co-director of uh, uh, Rapunzel. Um, he, I, I, I saw one of his speeches and he said something that it touched hard to me. What he said, like, great that you're an animator and great that you're working your butt off, but you need to live. You need to live to animate. You cannot get, if you're constantly on the computer or you're constantly drawing, you never get the chance to, to, do, to visualize everything that's around you. And as an animator, you need to see this. You need to see the world. So how do you animate in your little box with that because you're working too hard? So it is, it, it is a struggle, right? But you need to make time to balance it out. Work right. with, with, with passion, you know, in life. You need to live to work. You don't work to live. So, you know, try to burn out is, you know, have a balance. And that's a, that's a challenge thing. I mean, I, I do it all the time. You know, there's times where you work long hours, but, you know, there's other times that you, you do regular hours and you need to make it. You know, you, you can you, know, you do your workout, you, you, you make sure you eat dinner or lunch and socialize. I love, you know, when one of the things that I do at work is like when we eat, we don't talk about work. We have enough work that we do through the day. We talk about other stuff, things that are, we like passionate about it. 
you know, how was your weekend? What did you do? What other hobbies do you have? Just, you know, you get to know other people, you know, you cannot be in that little box being, uh, you know, maybe at first when you started, because I was the same way when I started, I was so happy that A, I was getting paid with what I went to school for. Um, two, I was very happy to see my work on, on TV. Um, and I, I, I find that it was enjoyable. So I was putting a lot of effort and putting a lot of hours doing it, but then it catches up to you. Like, you know, the burnout part of it and you don't want to do that. You want to show that in the beginning, you have a balance. Mm -hmm. Go do some dancing classes or something after work, do something else, go do some <laughs> Zumba or yoga or something. Um, Hassan and uh, Diana most recently asked this, but this is a question that's come up from a lot of our participants. Uh, you work on projects for your job um, and for those who've hired you, whether it was at PSYOP or, you know, Curious Pictures or more recently The Mill, obviously, because you're working at The Mill now. But do you also do side projects or personal projects for yourself? Like, is there anything that you do for fun that's an outlet for you? Yes, my outlet is like I mentioned, I go through stages. So again, uh, you know, it's like the, the shiny thing here, the shiny, ooh, I want, I want, I want that. So it depends. So sometimes, I, I mean, again, I, I mentioned that I, I like technical, technological stuff. So I was into a period, I was into 3D printing and then uh, I'm in 3D lasers now. Um, so I get to do, you know, I still draw. So I draw and then I'll make stuff, you know. Um, you know, I started making, <laughs> it sounds pretty stupid, but I started making earrings for my wife and I, I got kind of good that's at it. Oh, that's wonderful. So, I mean, give me a second. <laughs> you know, I started doing this stuff for my oh, wife. That's amazing. So creative wise, you know, you just do, you know, I like, again, I mentioned tangible, so I like to do stuff. Um, you know, you never know what, what, what you, where you're good at until you, you, you try it. So I'm, I'm doing jewelry. I did jewelry. Okay, fine. What's next? I'm doing some coasters. I want to do maps. Uh, I'm rebuilding my bathroom. I, I, you know, I'm, I, I, my handy, I, I, I want to learn how to do plumbing and electrical stuff. That's what takes me down a notch. I'm like, okay, I'm just not animating Monday through Friday on the weekend. I'm like, I'm doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps me, my sanity going where I'm, 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 I'm artistic in other ways, mm -hmm. not just like, you know, on the computer. Well said. Um, what do you most like about your job and what do you least like about your job? That's always a curiosity I have for those of you in your respective fields. The least thing I hate is my commute to work. I hate what? it. The commute. Co co commuting to work, it sucks for me. I, I live far away. So from door to door is an hour and a half. So uh, that's three hours of my life. I'm on the bus or subway or whatever. So I hate that part. I love, you know, be, be, before pan, uh, the pandemic, I loved it. I, I like going to work. I enjoy what, what am I working next? Um, and, and I like the, you know, like every job is a different challenge and who knows what comes up. So, uh, you know, it could be like I mentioned before, many, I sound like a broken record. It's like, uh, is it a product shot? Is it, is it an animation? Is it, a, is it an animal? Is it a dragon? Is it, what, what is it? And then you go from there and, and each one has a challenge and you need to kind of like, you know, go through that obstacle. And to me, that's the, that's the exciting part. Um, speaking of challenges, Irie Lynn was asking, you know, have you had any challenges in your career? Um, are there any specific challenges that you've experienced recently? And if you have, um, you know, how might you have overcome those challenges? I mean, again, all these challenges, um, I like to say that I did it myself, but I'm, I'm sure I didn't. I, I had support from friends and family. So, uh, I mean, I remember there was a challenge when I went over to PSYOP and we were doing this World of Coke and it was like a three month project and it was long and we had to supervise. I was a uh, lead sequence supervisor for two of the sequences for World of Coke. And it was challenging because it was, it was big, it was really big. And, and the, I mentioned these guys, Jim Hundemark and Pat Porter and myself were the leads on that. Uh, and Nick Wiggle was the creative director on it. And all three of us, all four of us sat together and we, 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 we made sense of this massive amount of work that we had. And we all four of us sat together and we went through the edit and we made it work. So it was a very good collaborative work between our friends. And we all wanted the best thing, which is to make a good project, a good storytelling. 
And then we presented it to SIAB creative directors and they liked it. They loved it. They went with it. Um, so that was a challenge that I had to, to, to go through it. Another challenge is that I go through is, uh, is uh, working with other people. You know, um, you, 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 you want to push people uh, to be creative, but you can't make them. If they're not, cre if they don't want to do it, they're not going to, you're not going to get it. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a level of how to, how do you different, how do you treat different personalities? How do you bring the best out of those people? Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge uh, because some people are easy. Some people are hard. How do you, how do you navigate that? Uh, and I'm a supervisor. I, I, I need to get, I need to be good at that because um, we, we, we're only as, as good as our team. So, you know, if you're a good general, if you don't have a good army, you're going to lose your war. Uh, yeah. So you, you need to have a good team all together and all, everyone has to have communication skills. And it's a very collaborative industry. Um, you're all working together under tight deadlines. You see each other more than your significant others or family yep. members. So you need to be able to work well together. Exactly. Um, Orion asks a really good question. I actually think about this question myself. Um, what words of advice would you, would you tell your younger self? You know, looking back. <laughs> I would probably say to him, uh, stop being such an ego guy in the beginning. I know I've, I've, I have a friend of mine who was my mentor, Dave Barrison, and he tells me stories when I was a kid starting out. And I'm like, oh God, I can't believe I said that to him. But you, know, <laughs> you, you, know, you come in and you, know, you have an ego and I, I wish I didn't have that when I was starting out. But, you know, you live and learn, you know, you don't know everything as a kid. And you, you, know, you know, now you learn is like, I'm, I'm here to help everyone else now. Uh, I, f I feel like I, I met another guy, Dave Blakey, where I remember I saw his reel when I was a friend, when I, when I graduated and, I, and his reel was amazing. I'm like, I want to, I want to have a reel just like you. And he's like, you, you will get it. Don't worry about it. He was already like where I am now. We're not jaded, but more like you'll, you'll get it. You'll, if you're good in art, if you're a good artist, you'll find work no matter what. Um, I think, um, I mean, I think that's for anybody. If you're a good person, good artist, you, you'll find work somewhere doing, doing something that's creative for sure. So I would tell that person, you know, stop being such an ego guy and then just uh, have fun and, 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 and try to be more yourself. I kind of want to hear what, uh, what are some of these words that you, you shared with Dave? I'm going to have to ask oh, him. God, don't ask him. He's <laughs> All right. My last question for you. And, and, you know, you guys have been, and gals have been asking such really great questions um, in this, in this chat. Um, do you have any special words of warning or encouragement as a result of your experience in this field for uh, those who are listening? Yes. I mean, for, for those guys who are listening, and I mean, the best advice that I give you is, I, I, I've said it before, is like, no matter what is in front of you or what job you have, do the best that you can. Don't take it for granted because you don't know who's watching. You don't know who is looking at the, the job that you did or who's going to notice what you've done. You don't know that. So if you go in like, oh, I got to rotoscope this or I have to do a mat or I have to model a, a, a cell phone or a pencil, it doesn't matter. Just make the best of it as you can. And I'm sure it would open up opportunities. It happened to me and has happened to numerous people. You know, and I, and I do it too. Like when I get, when we hire a new person, I will give them a mundane uh, uh, task just to see how they would react as if they have an ego, do you like, oh, I don't want to do that. That's not, that's beyond me. No, that's not the attitude that I want. I want to be, for you to be true of what you, you know, be proud of what you represent to this company or any company. You know, you, you don't know who, who's, who's watching, do the best that you can. I think that's the best advice that I can give you that I wish I, I tell myself when I started, you know, do the best you can. Don't take it for granted. That's it. Very, very well said. Well, Jeff, as you know, I always love talking to you or I always love an excuse to catching up with you. So thank you so much for, for speaking with us all today. Your insight was invaluable and I think everyone really appreciated uh, your, your feedback. And um, we, uh, we really appreciate you being here. So thank you. thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me. It was a pleasure. Uh, uh, I love doing this. I love to share this stuff. I, li I like to give back to the community. Um, I, I love uh, that. I hope everyone, uh, someone took uh, notice of this. If at least one person can, I can guide them to go to the right path. Like, is, is this my thing? If it's not my thing, 
uh, that I wish I'd, I made a difference for to whoever whoever's watching. So thank you again for inviting me. I'm sure you have, Jeff, and we look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.